So social doubts, it's very important to understand that we are a society and if you study social psychology, there are two main things that develop the social norm. Number one, informational social influence. And number two, normative social influence. What's informational social influence? All human beings want to feel certain. Now, if I don't feel certain about something, for example, God's existence, proof of Quran, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I'm going to go to my subgroup to find that certainty. If they're not giving me certainty, if I go to a Molana and ask him a question, he says, just say Bismillah, go away, this is Shaitan, then I'm not going to go to my subgroup anymore. I'm going to go now to the dominant group. And if a secular atheist culture becomes the dominant group, then there you go. That's what's going to happen. That's how human beings work from a social psychological perspective. Normative social influence is about belonging. I want to belong, right? There, you know, there's no such thing as a personality on a desert island. What does chilling out on a desert island really mean? Well, you're on your own, right? What does being compassionate really mean on a desert island? You have to relate to something. As the famous wise sage Bruce Lee said, to be is to be related. We know ourselves through our relationships, right? So we, wanna, we have a sense of belonging. Now, if I go to my, my subgroup, the Muslim community, and I have some quirky ideas, I'm a bit of a free thinker, maybe I don't look just like you, my beard's a bit too short, and maybe I'm wearing funky trousers, but I still want to connect with you. But if that community is intolerant, and that community is shunning me away, and that community is saying that you're a deviant, that you don't know what you're talking about, that you're stupid, and we have this ethno-religious cultish mindset about certain things, then where are they going to go? They're going to go to the dominant group. Reap what you sow, brothers and sisters. Don't get me wrong, we have our positions. We, we believe in classical Islam, we believe in orthodoxy. But we have to know how to apply that in the 21st century with all of these differences. So we bring people closer to Allah, not to push them away. So the way to do this, to facilitate this, is to fundamentally change our, our discourse, fundamentally change the way we're structured in our societies, and stop treating Islam like an ethno-religious cult, and make people realize that Islam is not just an abstract belief. Islam transcends the belief. In philosophy, a belief is very mundane. This is a microphone. Islam is not equivalent to saying that this is a microphone. Islam transcends belief from the point of view that Islam is a form of knowing that changes your heart, changes what you say and how you relate with yourself, how you relate with others, and how you ultimately relate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam changes your state of being your state of becoming, because we're not human doings, we're human beings.